Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to the Relationship Marketing Podcast. I'm Brad Smith, and today I am joined with Matt with Smart Sites. How's it going today, Matt? Uh, very good. I had a long day yesterday at Small Business Expo, but it was a lot of fun, and I'm excited to be here. Well, I'm excited to share your story. You guys are doing some really cool things at Smart Sites, and that's what we want to do. We want to help businesses share their story and talk about how you're helping people. So if you could, just give my audience a quick overview of how you guys are currently helping your clients now, and then we'll dive into the fun stuff. Yeah, so we're actually a full 360 digital agency started by two brothers in 2011. So we've been going on for about 13 years now. We started off simply by offering SEO, but I've grown to be as 360 as possible because we found that clients are looking for a one-stop solution as opposed to a fragmented approach to having one client for SEO or one agency for paid search, one agency for social. So we went on from just offering one service to now offering you know half a dozen. And we've grown quite a lot in the past 13 or so years, going from a team of less than 10 to actually close to 400. And the cool thing I'm working with a team like that is, as opposed to having just one person who's trying to spin 10 different plates or wear 10 different hats, you get experts and specialists in individual fields who can work on their specialty and help uh, grow businesses. So yeah, I'm really excited to be here. I'm excited to share some of our stories and some of our case studies. Awesome. And so I, we talked about this already. I wasn't going to share this till later, but I think what you just mentioned about your clients, not just needing SEO, they really need somebody to help them with all the different expertise because there's so many out there. Um, I saw this cool review on your site. They have helped me grow my business from a weed to an oak tree. <laughs> and um and they probably didn't have to do it. I'm flooded with calls because of their hard work. We've seen a return on our investment 10 times over, which is really cool. My brand is now thriving thanks to smart sites. And I think that goes to show where you guys probably just took over you know, all their marketing needs instead of just one thing, if they're able to grow their business like that. that that's a cool one. I don't think I've seen that. Um, I think one of the best reviews that I've gotten, it wasn't actually in the form of left online, uh, but one client actually called and asked us to stop doing some of their paid search because they were getting too many phone calls. They said, hey, can we take a break for, <laughs> for two weeks while we catch up on these leads? Wow. Um, I should have got them to write that down and post it online, but that was one that stuck with me. But the uh, the weed to the oak tree is really cool. <laughs> I like that. And I really like the approach you guys take on offering more than just one service. You know, it's really hard for somebody to offer all the services, but since you guys have an expert for each one, I think that's important because a business, they're busy. They're helping their clients. They're trying to do their finances. They're trying to pay their lease or whatever they're, you know, they've got their head on other things. They really need those experts to take over and do it for them, which I think is huge taking that bespoke approach like that. How did you start in the business? So I have a pretty interesting story at Smart Sites. Um, when I started here, I actually was looking for a writing position because my background is in English and literature. So I was actually looking to find a position where I can lend my expertise as a writer, an editor, or a contributor. And I found Smart Sites, uh, who at that point was a relatively small company looking for exactly that, a writer. So yeah. I came in, um, I was in a suit and tie, and it was a very relaxed environment when I walked in, you know, sh shorts and flip-flops at the time. We've definitely grown up a little bit since then. Yeah. Um, but I started learning about the space, digital marketing, SEO. I met with both the founders, you know, on that first day, and I was pretty hooked into the space. And I said, Hey, if you want me to, and I get this position, I'm going to be an amazing writer for you. And I'll be an amazing editor. But if anything else opens up, you know, let me know, I'm happy to help wherever I can. So I went from being a writer to being an editor. So I was editing people's content to actually managing a team of writers. And then at a certain point, um, a position opened up in the sales team. So I said, hey, I can try my best here. And um, I'm not a salesperson at heart, but uh, I'll give, yeah. it my, give it a go. And seemed to have some you know, good client interactions. And um, I really enjoyed talking to clients, learning about the businesses. So I went from writing, editing, managing editors to joining a sales team and kind of grew within the sales organization to actually managing my own team of um, yeah, sales individuals. So that was a 13 year growth path. And now I'm the chief sales officer here. I manage the sales team. I manage a lot of the marketing initiatives we do. And I'm really thankful to be here because it's just a cool organization. And um, yep. I think I have a pretty interesting path to how I got here today. Well, that's that's a good story. I don't know how you go from writer to head of sales, but that is, um, 
I mean, I think if you do sales different than most people, like I don't, I feel like you guys aren't doing sales. Like you're not pressuring people because you mentioned something there that you dive into the client's business. Like you ask more questions about what they're looking for, what they need. Is that kind of your approach? Instead of trying to sell them, you're asking them more about them and seeing what yeah. their needs are. Uh, I'd say a, a common compliment we get actually from a lot of the clients when we do go through kind of our proposals, which is very heavily based on research and conversations we have with the clients prior to getting that stage, is that they appreciate the thoroughness. And like you said, we are not trying to do any sort of hit hard sales techniques because we know that marketing is a large investment. We know it's a long-term investment. Nobody wants to jump from company to company. They want to find someone they can trust who can do good work and they can work with for a long time. So we take a very research-driven approach where on that first call, we're going to be asking you a lot of questions, trying to understand your business, your competitors, your goals, your challenges, and use that to you know find and understand how we can help within the frame of what we offer. You know, If you're having issues with your actual building and you need the aesthetic redesign of your building, we can help that. But if you need people to come to your building or your website, that's an area that we can help and we'll show you ways we can do it. Um, and then you know, once they do come on board, we go way even further into the conversations where we try to further understand what the competitors have done, what the client has done, um, what areas can we improve upon, what areas can we you know build upon, what areas have not been tapped yet that we can you know work, work through. So um, we try to really understand the business and we work with a ton of different clients and industries, which can be challenging, but it's also fun because we, we learn so much about so many different things. Yeah, I love how you said um, that you don't just try to get them to sign up right away. You take your time and come up with something custom or investigate what they really need. And the fact that you're looking for a long-term partner, they're looking for a long-term partner as well. Like you don't want to spend, you know, one day getting them to sign up for one or two months with you. Like let's take exactly. a couple of weeks or a month and build that relationship. So like, I love how you guys take that relationship approach. What's the... What's the pain point you usually see? So if you're doing sales, I'm sure you're on, you used to be probably on, on calls and and now you have a team on the calls. What is that person who's listening right now or who's watching and what's that pain point they're feeling where they would need to get on a call and maybe hire you guys? Maybe what's something common you hear from people, um, whether it's I'm trying to do it all on my own and I'm ripping my hair out or my my business is a weed. I want it to be an oak tree. I think there are probably three common, you know, issues or pain points that uh, I hear um, from clients that I speak with, or even just from talking with uh, the team saying, hey, how did this conversation go? What were they looking for? What challenges did they have? And I think the three are one, exactly what you mentioned. They don't have time to manage their own business because they're trying to do everything themselves. They're trying to write content on the website. They're trying to be a developer and add pages to the website. They're trying to outreach to companies to link back to their site. And everything that we do here, it's not something that you know no one can do. You just need the time, the resources, and the expertise to do it. And if yeah. you're trying to do all this and grow your own business, it's almost impossible. So you know, just finding someone who can help with all the things that they've been doing themselves is certainly one. Um, another is you know, clients that are working with another company already. And the two things that you know they have challenges with are one simply communication, which sounds like such a small and simple thing. But unfortunately, we hear from a lot of businesses that we work with that they have either a tough time getting in touch with their you know, agency or their marketing company, or they don't have like a dedicated point of contact. They're more like a support ticket or a ticket number in their support system, as opposed to you know a client that they have a relationship with. Yeah. And the last is simply results, which can be either working with another agency or just doing on their own. They're not seeing the results that they hoped for when they started doing this marketing and they want someone to help uplift them. I love the relationship part. That's why the, maybe that's why this podcast stood out to you, relationship <laughs> marketing. <laughs> Absolutely. And when they're spending, I mean, thousands of dollars, whether it's in ads or for their agency, like they need someone they could call or someone yeah. that they can trust to handle it and not have to wait a month. We We see that a lot too. People call us because... I've reached out to my website guy and he hasn't got back to me in a month. Like yep. it wants to charge me 500 bucks for one little change. So it's tough. All right. So somebody's watching and listening, they're trying to do it on their own or they're feeling one of those pain points. 
they know they need help. What's something we can share with them that maybe is working well right now from what you guys are seeing or what your clients are seeing? Do you have any tips you could share with somebody that maybe they could tr try out? Yeah, so I think the cool thing about online marketing is there are so many resources online specifically. So if you do want to dive into it, there are free SEO crawling tools. There are free tools that can help you understand your page feed and you know maybe why it's lacking. You can see how many backlinks that you have, which ones are good, which ones are bad. And there are free courses online where you can learn more about the intricacies of content creation or paid search management. So there's just so much that you can learn and research to see, hey, maybe this is something that I can do and I can dedicate five to 10 hours a week to doing that. And then if you get to a point where you say, hey, I've maxed out on the knowledge that I've been able to gain, that's when you might want to consider you know, hiring someone else. I actually worked with a client very recently who did all those initial steps and actually saw within the first six months from doing it themselves, they were writing content, they were posting blogs, they did a few simple ads for, for Google, and they were actually getting phone calls and getting more organic traffic. And that was a signal enough for them saying, hey, if I can do it, just investing a few hours per week, what can I get from an agency who's going to invest, you know, 10 to 20 hours a week on, on this project? Wow. So they had that proof just from doing it themselves. They sold themselves. You didn't even need exactly. to do a sales exactly. call. They just <laughs> like, let me test it. Oh, wow, it works. All right, fine. I'm sold. <laughs> now, um, you did mention something that you guys are starting to get into more. I haven't even got into this yet, but um, influencer marketing, I know, is is really big right now. Anything you could share with that that you, you have any clients that are doing it or any results that you're seeing or maybe why should somebody get into that yeah so it's it's pretty cool and it's something that we are dipping our toes into we just got out of our first round of beta testing with a few select clients that you know have been working with us for a while and just wanted to try something different that we had been thinking about for quite a while because whenever you offer or introduce a new service you want to make sure that you as the client or you as the agency really understand it and know how it works what the benefits might be all the intricacies of the operation. And once you figure that out, test it with some people that you trust and are willing to kind of take a little bit of a leap. And if things go well for them and they, they can give you feedback, um, then start offering it to maybe a slightly larger pool. And then once that pool is happy and satisfied and give you feedback, then you can start opening it up. But the cool thing about influencer marketing is it allows you to connect with an audience that you might not have been able to before. So when you post content on your own social, you're basically reaching the people that already follow you, which is great because you want to communicate with them. You want to tell them what's going on, if there's special offers or product updates or what have you. But when you make a relationship with an influencer, they're going to talk about your business or your product to their audience, which could be as you know small as one to 10,000 to as large as you know hundreds of thousands of followers. So they can basically amplify your you know product or your business to their audience, which you may not have been able to connect with before. So something that we're um, just getting started in, in, into, we're about six months into our uh, beta and testing, and we're actually going to start opening it up pretty soon. So we're excited about it. I think influencer marketing is the new relationship marketing because the influencer already has a relationship with their audience and that audience all, already trusts them. I mean, what, one of the big ones is the Kardashians. They can sell anything online. They can post something and sell out that same day because they've got millions of followers that already trust whatever they're, or just maybe they don't trust them, but they'll buy it. <laughs> but um, I think it's a new relationship marketing because I don't have to go build relationships with your audience. You do that for me. You've already done that for me. You've done that hard work and built that audience. So I love that. And I think that's something we definitely need to look into. And if anyone's watching or listening to this, Start looking into that. It's hard enough growing your own audience, let alone stealing someone's audience. So try to partner with them and have them help you grow your audience. You'll have to invest in it, but I think that investment's huge. Yeah. I mean, to me, to an extent, this is a form of influencer marketing. We're able to talk to your audience, your your listeners, and tell them our story, which we had not been able to before. So we appreciate you know you giving us this opportunity to chat with you and share some of our ideas and our stories and tell people about what's going on at SmartSide. So yeah, I just wanted to give you a little appreciation on this, this whole event and organizing it. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. And that's really my key is how can I help people tell their stories? Cause everyone's so different and everyone's has different ideas and different relationships they can build. So that's perfect. 
segue into my next question is, let's just say I really need help. I'm right on the edge. I've tried doing it on my own, you know, but I want to work with you guys. Is there anything that makes you guys different? And I think we've already talked about this uh, and you guys build that relationship, but um, maybe walk me through like what that first month looks like working with you. So our first month is very heavy into the research stages where we're going to be asking you a lot of questions, really trying to dive into the business and understand what you've done before, understand maybe what um, your audience likes, what they don't like, so we can use that to start building out some strategies. And then once we have some of these things laid out, we always try to take it a step further, saying, okay, we have this general plan and we have a, a good sense of some content we're going to be writing, some maybe links that we're going to be building, but why are we building this, these con or why are we building these links? Why are we building this content? Why do we create this sort of ad group versus that sort of ad group? And we discuss it with the client in a way that they can understand it because some of the stuff is pretty technical, but we do want to make sure that they're on board with our strategy before we start doing anything. Because if we get into a project three months in and they say, hey, why did you do this? Um, that's not a good position for us because we want to make sure that they understand why we're doing things to benefit their business and that they also agree. And if they have comments or feedback from their experience because they know their business and industry way better than we ever will, that information and um, yeah, feedback is just extremely valuable. So we can say, all right, we understand what you're saying, what you're trying to do. Let's implement that into the strategy and try and um, yeah, make it as best as possible. And one you know simple thing that we want to make sure that we also accomplish in the first month, which more I think more often than not, we actually see clients don't have tracking set up, even if they've had websites for for years. Um, and tracking can be as simple as you know there was a large change to Google Analytics recently. They rolled out a new version last year and basically sunsetted the old one. So that we saw a lot of clients had lapsed. Uh, so they lost a few months of data. And then on the more advanced side, we want to set up things like, you know, if you're a B2B business, phone call, contact form, appointment booking tracking. And if you're an e-commerce business, revenue tracking. Um, so we can say, all right, well, when we started, you were getting X phone calls, you know, Y contact forms or Z sales from your site. Now, three, six, 12 months in, here's what the data looks like. Here's what the data looks like compared to the same time last year. So we have at least a baseline when we start and it can show them the growth month over month. Real quick, if so, you're watching this and you haven't checked, if you type in analytics.google.com and nothing shows up, call Matt. <laughs> it's hilarious because that's one thing we see every day. Like they, they even have a marketing company and I don't want to hate on other marketing companies, but if you type in analytics.google.com and nothing's there, you're missing something. So you, tracking is huge. How are you going to know if you're you're growing or not? Like that's Definitely. really key. But just to go back to how you started that was, I love how you investigate their business before starting because not every business is the same. Their language is going to be different. Their copywriting, the relatability. Like I talked to someone yesterday. I thought I knew his business. And after talking to him for 30 minutes and recording the call, getting the transcription totally different so you know it's so good to investigate and make a different tailored approach for that person instead of just assuming because their audience is going to be different than the next business's audience so great job on that all right case study time you guys have too many reviews on your site by the way <laughs> um do you have a good problem good problem i think exactly you mentioned you had a cool case study for us and i love like case studies on stories like it's relatable because if you're watching and listening to this, you don't want to, you know, maybe you wouldn't want to hear a case study from a $20 million a month SaaS company, right? That's just not relatable. But um, I'm sure you're going to come with a, a case study, Matt, that's relatable to anyone watching. Yeah. So there's two that I have in mind, I guess, depending on time, we can go through one or two. Um, one is an existing business that wasn't doing much, much marketing that we're able to help grow. The other was an existing business that had zero web presence. So happy to jump into one or two, depending on the time. Yeah, any any preference on the two options that I gave you there? Let's do them both. I, look <laughs> at, I think case studies are the best because if you're watching, listening to this, think of make this relatable to you. Think of yourself. Where are you at in your business? What do you have? What you don't have? And what are your goals? And how can this case study help you and open your eyes and make it relatable to you? You're going to get some good snippets out of this. I think I get the best snippets from reviews. I told you, Matt, because you can actually see that person and what they were struggling with and then the outcome from there. So 
Let's hear them. Cool. So the first one is actually a company we did a um, webinar with about a month ago. So if you want to check that out on our website, you can see a webinar. It was with a company called Honeydew Men. Uh, they're a home service or contracting company in Westchester. Uh, and we did a webinar with them and one of our partners, Smith, who is also a joint client. So Smith does phone answering services. Uh, Smart Sites does marketing for Honeydew Men. And we talked about basically the growth on the, the website. So this is the company that already had an existing website when they came to us. And now I think we've been with them for about five years. And we did a few things. And I think the interesting thing about this client is we started out mainly with SEO, which is the first service that kind of introduced them to what we did and who we are. And I think they quickly saw from working with our project management team that we have a lot of the credible things that I mentioned in the beginning, which is as something as simple as having good communication, picking up the phone when someone calls, answering emails in a timely fashion. And then that alone is definitely not enough to warrant a good relationship, but they actually started to see some of the strategy ideas that we had uh, that we thought we could help their business compared to maybe some of the other strategies they've gotten from other marketing companies. And we became very collaborative with them where we would share ideas. They would share ideas back with us, which just helped us you know, put the marketing on such a better track because they had an idea of things that they wanted to do, but they just didn't have time to do it. So they hired us to create content, optimize the site, to make sure the tracking was set up so that when they did start getting leads, they knew where they came from. And a lot of the marketing that they did previous to working with us was like buying lists and buying leads from third-party companies. But what they found out was most of those leads are sent to 10 other people. And some of the leads are just very outdated. Whereas when someone comes to your website, you know that they're fresh and relevant and they're, and they're looking for you. So we went from just offering that one service to actually offering them paid search. We said, hey, you see the organic growth happening month over month. If you want to supplement that with some other audience on the paid search side, because half of the people are going to click on the organic results, the other half might click on the paid search. So even if you're doing extremely well in organic, you're still leaving out half of the audience on paid. So we're able to build out some uh, initial paid search campaigns at a small budget, because what I typically tell the clients that I work with is start at a place you're comfortable with, let us show you the results. And then if the results are good, it's much easier to scale paid search than it is SEO because SEO, no matter how much you invest, it's still a slow growth month over month. Uh, with paid search, if you were to, let's say, double your bu budget in month three versus month four, ideally, if all things go well, your results should double. So you should get double the amount of leads, double the amount of phone calls and, and so on. I'm going to stop this story for a second and jump to the other one because I think cool. the reason that these relationships are so successful is you know, based on the actual team we're working with on their side. Okay. Um, so the other company is an online, um, e it's an e-commerce store, but they only had brick and mortar for you know however long they were in business for, starting with us maybe 10, 15 years. And they came to us and said, hey, we do really well in person. When people come to the store, they love our customer service. They love our product. Our products are great. They're high quality, but nobody knows who we are outside of, you know, a 20 mile radius or around our foot footprint. Yeah. So we want to you know, sell the products to anyone. We have the infrastructure, we have the warehouse, we just don't have the systems. Cool. So we built them the store and then we started marketing. And once I got that first sale online, they were super excited. We did a combination of SEO and paid search and they saw again, the, the results and they were able to do the scaling that I mentioned. They started with a few thousand per month on paid. They said, hey, I'm spending 3,000, 4,000, whatever it might be on paid. I'm getting $15,000 back in sales. If I spend 6,000 on paid, will I get 30,000 back in sales? And it's like, yeah, most likely that's going to be the case as long as we can maintain your return, make sure that there's nothing bad that slips through the cracks. Like that is the goal. And what both companies end up doing is essentially hiring us for almost every service that we offer whether it be email marketing or organic social, because they got to a point where they just trusted us. And they said, hey, we know at this point, we've been working together for over a year, over two years, that whatever you suggest to us is going to be in earnest with our best intentions in mind. So they gave us the flexibility to experiment with things and to try and grow their brand like we would try and grow our own brand. So definitely a lot of credit and kudos to the business owners and the marketing team at both companies, because they were able to trust us and allow us to do our work and flex our muscles. Um, not to say that a client that wants to be involved in every step of the way is you know, bad or, or, not, or not good. That's not true either. But these yeah. two companies in particular, I think a lot of their success and growth were led by their ability to just 
let go a little bit and let us try things that we um, maybe wouldn't always try the first time around. The, it's almost like that Omni approach. And I, when you do that as a business, now you your potential customers are seeing you everywhere. So yeah. they see your organic, they see your ads, then they get your emails, then they see your retargeting, right? So by doing all of those services, and I know you have to work up to that point, but now I've heard people come back and say, when they're doing all the marketing, people think I'm a celebrity because they see me everywhere. <laughs> Well, yeah, because you're retargeting them. You're like Nike, right? So it's easier than ever to do that with AI. Do you think, um, I think both of those you said might've started with organic. Do you think before starting ads or running ads, do you think a business should do organic first or at least have organic? Yeah, it's definitely tough because with SEO or organic, it's going to be a slow and steady growth period. So if you needed you know, more phone calls and more contact forms, right away to help keep the business alive and keep your you know team working, SEO is not going to be able to accomplish that for at least four to six months. Because if you're starting at zero, it's going to be, and I'm not sure which way my hand is pointing, but it's going to be a slow and steady growth month over month where you see you know more traffic compared to the previous month. You see more calls compared to the previous month, but it's going to be, again, slow and steady. So it might not be four to six months before you start seeing the fruits of the labor yeah. with paid search you can start putting money into a campaign right away and start getting traffic that next day. Is that sure. traffic going to be perfect? Is it going to be converting the next day? Most likely not because we need to understand who the audience is, what they're clicking, what they're searching, what actions they're doing when they get to the website, but you can see the results much faster than you would SEO. So what a lot of our clients do is invest in both SEO and paid search in the upfront. And then if they see that, or they're comfortable with the volume that they're receiving for SEO after let's say six or 12 months, they might say, hey, I want to continue with just this. Let's pause the paid search and just focus on the organic growth because I see that being a longer term solution. Or some clients might say, hey, both things are growing really well. Let's keep investing in both and let's you know, hopefully see the continued growth, um, whether it be 6, 12, 24, 36 months down the line. 100%. I, lo I love that answer. And one thing that we've seen too, you've probably seen this, is some people think they can rely only on ads, no social media, no emails, and no Google. But when reality, it's really hard to, you know, from what we've seen to scale a company only relying on ads, because you're always trying to just break that, that return on investment every single month. So yep. if, if you are in, you have your business, business owner listening, you know, try to do at least organic and social media on your own, um, or just keep doing that. Don't just stop that. Once you start working with a marketing agency, I don't know if you've seen anything where people just stop working on their business and only rely on ads and. Um, you can't just rely on ads. You got to keep building relationships, you know, whether it's through videos, emails, or social media. Absolutely. All right, Matt, I want to follow you guys. I'm going to post your, our work page um, cool. in the description, because I thought that was really interesting. If you guys go to their site and look at their, our work, you can see the website examples and the results that they've got for each, for most of their clients, for a lot of their clients. So make sure you guys check that out. Where are you guys the most active at on social media where somebody could follow you and maybe just keep getting inspired or learning tips. Yeah. So I think there's a couple of places uh, you can subscribe, subscribe to our newsletter where we post about two times per month with what's going on, what events we have coming up, where we talk about things like this that we're doing. So most likely in the next newsletter, depending on what time this comes out, we'll have cool. um, a link back to this podcast as well. Um, you can also follow us on LinkedIn and Instagram just to see you know more frequent posts a few times per week uh, or just check out our website to see what's going on. We have events there. Uh, so we have always something happening. Cool. All right. I want, I need a consultation. I, this, I might need some help. Um, how should I do that? Yeah, you can actually reach out to me directly. I'm happy to chat with anyone here. Um, I don't know if you want to include it somewhere, but it is smartsites.com slash meet slash MP. So that's M-E-E-T slash MP. And then uh, that'll go straight to my calendar. Cool. I'll make sure I include that. And um, thanks for sharing your insight today and taking your time out. And if you guys are watching this, think of yourself. Where are you at in your business? Are do you need to build better relationships online? Do you need to get you know better ads out there? Do you need to grow organically? You just need somebody that can take over this because you can't do everything in your business, right? So find a team that you can trust and that has your best interests. And I think you found that with uh, Matt and Smart Sites. So thanks for joining me, Matt. I appreciate it. Absolutely, I appreciate your time. Appreciate the opportunity. I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, the live um, live reel. Awesome. That sounds good. And I hope everyone has a good day and keep building relationships with your audience.